This video is a follow on from the last one in the Python TK Inter playlist. Here we have a look at alternative ways of obtaining data from the graphical user interface and displaying the data on the graphical user interface. And here we'll be looking at how we can read in the temperature in Fahrenheit and how we can then display the temperature in Celsius. This is the program we looked at in the last video in the playlist and I recommend if you haven't seen the last video you have a look at it now before you carry on with this video. Now when this program executes what we're going to get is this graphical user interface. Now these five lines of code are responsible for creating the various instances of the widgets and these five lines are responsible for positioning the widget within the window. Let's consider a typical runtime for this program and the user will enter into this entry widget a temperature in this case of 32 degrees. They will then click onto this button. Clicking on the button will result in this function executing and the reason this function executes is because when we look at this program statement we can see that we made command equal to convert and of course this convert is the name of this function. So we can see when this instance of the button was created it was tied to this function. This will be the first line of the function to execute and if we look here we can see a message and the message is to this widget which we can see is this widget here and of course if we look at the message we can see we're invoking the get method and of course what this get will do it'll get this 32 and it will bring it to here of course when it brings it to this position we have to realize that it is a string we convert that string to a float and then assign it to f which is a program variable that's going to be representing the temperature of Fahrenheit for this program. This line now executes and of course F will now be storing 32 so from that we subtract 32 when the brackets will give us 0 multiply it by 5 you get 0 divided by 9 you get 0 so 0 will be assigned to C where C is going to represent the temperature in Celsius. This line will now execute and the value of C as you can see here is converted to a string and it is then assigned to the text attribute of this label. Now of course this label is here on the graphical user interface so we will see appearing in this position the value of C and because C is a float it'll be 0.0, .0 as you can see appearing here. Now I've just described what we covered in the last video in the playlist so if there's anything there you were unsure of you really need to go back and look at the previous video. I'm now going to go on from this program and introduce some amendments that look at how we can obtain data from the graphical user interface using different means and how we can display data on the graphical user interface again using a different approach. The first amendment is shown here. This is where we create an instance of a string object and that string object will be bound to this name Celsius. We will now look to this line to see another amendment and the amendment can be seen here. We've made the option text variable equal to Celsius. In effect the setting of the option as just described will tie to this label this variable here Celsius which is an example of a string object. This can be shown schematically by looking at the graphical user interface here and realizing associated with this label we have a variable called Celsius. An amendment to the program is also shown on this line which is the last line inside this function. Let's consider a typical runtime. Let's have the user enter 32 here and then click on the button. When they click on the button, this line will go and get the 32, bring it to here, and this line will then do the conversion and C will end up storing zero, as we've already discussed in this video. Then we come on to this line, which is an amendment to what we've seen previously in this video. Now this line is an example of a message and it is a message to this this object that invokes this method and this method is taking as a parameter this which is the value of C after it's been converted to a string. Now to be clear this message is to this object as it appears in the schematic diagram and consequently we will see appearing within this string variable 0.0. .0. 
Now, because this variable is related to this label because of this line of code here, as you can see by the setting of this option to Celsius, the zero here will automatically appear in the label. To emphasize the change I've made, let's have a look at the line of codes as it appeared in the program on the last slide. We can see we had this line, and this line has been replaced by this in the program we're considering now. For this line, we can see that C is converted to a string. It's assigned to the text property of this label, and of course, this label appears here on the graphical user interface. So for this line, we did not use this variable. This line replaced the one we've just discussed, and if we have a look, we can see that we're converting C to a string, and we're using this method, which belongs to this object, to set this variable here. And once you set this variable, the contents automatically appear here. So we can see there are effectively two different ways of achieving the same outcome, i.e. the displaying of Celsius on the graphical user interface. Further amendments are shown to the program on this slide. The first one I wish to highlight is shown here. This is where we create a variable that's going to act as a string variable, i.e. a string object. And you can see that was achieved using string var. Another amendment is shown on this line where we create the entry widget and you can see that this option has been set to Fahrenheit. Now this means that this entry widget is tied to this variable, this string variable, this string object. Let's consider the graphical user interface that this program produces and we already know to this label we have the following variable connected. Now, we're now going to be discussing what's attached to this entry widget. And what we will have attached here is this variable. And we can see that this variable is the Fahrenheit one that was created here. And it is attached to this entry widget because on this line, we set this option to Fahrenheit. Let's consider a typical runtime for this computer program. And we'll have the user enter into this entry box. 32 degrees and as you see the 32 appearing here it is automatically appearing in this variable the variable that's associated with the entry widget of course the user will now click onto the button and when they do that this function will execute and this line is the first line of the function and if we look here we can see there is a message now the message we have to be clear is to this variable here because this is the string object called Fahrenheit and we're going to be invoking the get method associated with this variable this object so this message is responsible for getting this 32, returning it to here, at which point it will be converted to a float and assigned to the variable f, where this is the program variable that holds the temperature in Fahrenheit. Of course, this line then does the processing and performs the conversion, converting the Fahrenheit of 32 to 0. So 0 will be stored in here as a float. We then convert it to a string and set this variable to 0. And you can see that that variable is set here. And of course, the 0, 0 that appears here will automatically appear in the label, as you can see. Let's now compare this line with the line as it appeared on the previous slide, which we can see here. Now, there is a difference. If you look here at this message, it is a message to this, and that is the entry widget here. So this goes directly to this entry widget to get the 32. Whereas on this line, this is the message, and this is the variable, not the widget. So this message goes directly to here, to the variable, to get the Fahrenheit. We've already seen in this video that this line was also an alternative to what we've seen before, which is this appearing now. So in this video, we've looked at different ways of getting information from a graphical user interface and also different ways of sending information, sending data to the graphical user interface. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.